Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Conspiracy Farm, where we don't start the conspiracies, we just add the water. And now, your host of the most state-of-the-art, most informed podcast on the interweb, I present to you, Pat Militage and Jeffrey Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for war? All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another episode of The Conspiracy Farm. Jeffrey Wilson riding shotgun, as always, with UFC, 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 UFC Hall of Famer Pat Militich. How are we doing today, champ? You know, I'm doing great. You know, in watching the documentary leading up to this with this, this uh, wonderful woman who's very brave that we're going to have as a guest, you know, it was very, very tough to watch. And obviously, for us just to watch it, it's tough. Imagine having to live it. So, you know, it's it's... It's news that has to get out. It's a story that has to get out. We've got to stop these people from doing this um, to younger generations. And uh, so she's very brave, and, and we're very happy to have her. Without a doubt, without a doubt. I mean, I've followed her. She's been around for, you know, a couple years. And again, to hear her story, it's just so... Uh, like, e even just doing the show research is really hard. But, I mean, to let alone go through it. So I really can't complain too much. But it, uh, it's just overwhelming it's really overwhelming and just heartbreaking and any of these adjectives really don't quite cover it quite frankly just because when you hear uh what our guest miss fiona barnett has gone through it's just uh like i said it's it's mind-boggling but you know we're gonna get into it and um we, we've talked about this a lot on this show and, sh and she's going to allude to it because she is uh kind of a direct result of how ubiquitous this is from from your family institutions, from your education institutions of school and religion and government. It is everywhere. And again, we can't thank her for enough for coming on. Fiona, how are you doing? It's actually morning over there in Sydney. How are you doing this morning? Oh, I'm, it's cold here. We've had a really cold snap recently. So it's everything's quite icy. And um, and I'm, uh, I'm tired. I'm tired now. I'm this last month, I've put a big effort into supporting uh, the victims trying to expose pedophilia in Hollywood yeah. and uh, then, of course, United States at large. And and it's get, it's wearing thin on me now. Yeah, I'm tired. And I'm tired of battling Billy Graham worshippers. Yeah, uh, we're going we're gonna to get into that because the names you... Uh, the names you drop, and I, I admire you for your name dropping because we have a lot of people, not to doubt his claims, but individuals, you know, God love him, Corey Feldman, he wants to raise $10 million for a documentary where it's like, I think it's really just about at this stage of the game dropping names and letting people know the truth, yeah, Re the absolute truth. And it's, again, it's it's deep, it's dark, and, and you've definitely been there. So, I, you know, I, I've listened to a lot of your interviews, and I know you almost, it's almost like autopilot when they're like, how'd this start, Fiona? So you really kind of go... You almost kind of say the same thing, obviously, because the story is still the same. But if you don't mind, just kind of briefly introduce how you got kind of into this world. And then I have like several names and kind of instances that I want you to kind of maybe expound on. Um, like I said, you got started out. This was a this was a family introduction to you. Um, former Nazi collaborator collaborators. Talk to us how you initially got introduced to this world. Are you shitting me? They did it to us already. <clears throat> What's it say there? Oh. Um, I'm sorry. There was there was just, it just said there was a connection lost there. You were rather prophetic before we got started. If you, I don't know how much we missed there, but go ahead and start over, please. Yeah, uh, I was introduced to the Luciferian cult, and then I was handed over to uh, the CIA for their research into MK Ultra and the Super Soldier program um, via my step grandfather on my father's side, and that's Peter Holozak, and uh, my grandmother, Helen Holozak, and they were Nazi war criminals. And um, a lot of Nazi war criminals uh, received asylum within Australia in exchange for security information. So we had a whole lot of them come over here and then um, what people need to realise is Nazism has a religious side to it. And there are a lot of communists too that um, were behind all of this. So a lot of a lot of Nazis, a lot of communists uh, received asylum in Australia under the guise of 
uh, refugee status. And um, when they got over here, uh, Luciferianism backs both of those. So backs communism and it backs Nazism. And the people um, who are involved in those areas are highly involved in Luciferianism. And so it's it was natural for the CIA to um, access these Luciferian groups and extract the knowledge they had regarding mind control techniques and dissociative techniques and um, using the brain's natural ability to dissociate, weaponizing that. You're not and the other abilities, psychic abilities, all the occult abilities um, that Hitler uh, um, around the world looking for, neglecting, uh, so did the CIA. And um, that's where you get the MK Ultra project overlapping. So, yeah, I was introduced by my grandparents, paternal grandparents, and they lived in a uh, sort of suburb south of Sydney called Ingadine. And right near Ingadine is Ingadine Boys Town, Australia's first boys town, which was a great source of victims uh, for both ritual abuse, pedophile rings and... And also for the ultimately the MK Ultra research, and uh, right near um, both Boys Town and my grandparents' home was Holsworthy Army Base, and right next to that was Lucas Heights Nuclear Reactor. And Lucas Heights Nuclear Reactor and Holsworthy Army Base both had underground CIA research facilities at them, and Pine Gap does too. So I, they're, they're the three main ones: Pine Gap. Holsworthy Army Base, Lucas Heights Nuclear Reactor, which is now called ANSTO. They are three CIA sites, and that's just been confirmed recently by a federal police officer to a friend of mine. And, and you had said, I mean, you kind of, I mean, whatever, it's all part of this whole story, but you pretty much, <clears throat> the CIA for a large, to a large extent, is running these these rings, whether it's weapons or drugs or organs or children or, you know, in this, in this kind of... Uh, cultish nature and I, I if i correct me if i'm wrong you had said in one of the interviews that um mk ultra got their practices for particular family bloodlines and their ritualistic occult uh practices is that correct yeah that's true yeah um the practices within mk ultra uh by getting a Aquino and dr west they were the three main doctors from america that um supervised all of my abuse. Uh, the, it was all occult-based, um, and that includes full-on occult rituals, chanting of uh, evil entity names, um, you know, the full thing, and uh, also, you know, astral travel, astral projection was weaponized, um, and, and you can see that through what's called the gateway process or hemisync, and that was a combination of John Lilly's work and other people's stuff. And um, that was, um, that culminated in a, a, a lab from hell um, situated at Dulce uh, in New Mexico. And that's what the main thing they were doing at Dulce was, well, one of the main things was the super soldier program. where And they were using child soldiers as are, part of that. You, are you familiar with the story recently here yeah. in the states, New Mexico, where they busted the the compound where some, I believe it was some Islamic radical, Islamic radical was training children to do school right. shootings. That, that's look. That's all related to the Arizona um, BOP, the the vets. I'm in contact with no less than five people who have been on the ground there, and I'm sick to death of people believing Craig Sawyer. Um, and he's crap. He's just a CIA asset still. Okay, he still works for the CIA. See, we and, had we've uh, had Craig on the show a couple times, and uh, it's interesting yeah. because I didn't know after the second time someone had said, and no. I'm, I don't know him, but I just you know I'm definitely believing what you're saying. But he, I don't he, know him either. He's done security for Obama, did security for Hillary, and I found yeah. it strange when he made yeah. that report about that compound in Arizona because it sounded like it was so legit with the Simex and everything else. And then he made the report Very saying, we jumped the gun, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm like, wow, you found all this stuff with kids and toys and bonded stuff on trees and there was nothing there? I found that odd. They found a body. They found a child's decomposed body and they had medical experts that said it was between, it was around nine years of age. 
And then that was all completely covered up with the help of Craig Sawyer. I blocked him the moment he followed me on Twitter. He's a piece of crap and I don't want anything to do with him because I'm in direct contact and I have a live feed that I am privy to where these VIPs communicate with each other and I'm privy to it all as it unfolds. Most of the stuff hasn't been published, what they've found. They've just found another set of tunnels, right? They're, they're, and and he, he's the one who coined the term screwy Louie, and that's such an insult. Lewis was actually, uh, went. he's never claimed to be a vet. Somebody tried to make out he was someone else who had committed crimes. That's not Louie. And one of the Aussies who went to Arizona checked up the case number and found out it's not Louis. And Louis is out there, from what I've heard, you know, he's very, um, you know, gung-ho and, you know, we wouldn't do things the way he does and some of the other guys wouldn't. But it's his brother that was a vet. And Louis, all he did was when um, Obama claimed that, um, you know, there were no vets, you know, being mistreated in America, Louis went, oh, yeah, as if. They're all running. They all knew they were running around the desert, drowning when the monsoons came because they were taking shelter in the low points where the dry riverbeds were. And, you know, they were drowning and they were starving and they had no clothes and whatever, all these returned soldiers that the government failed to support. So Louis set up an organisation to support those long before they found a child trafficking camp. And he knows the difference between a homeless vet camp, a homeless person's camp, and, and, a, and, a, and a child trafficking camp. And he actually was in great relationships with the police. The police used to come and ask him to come and do talks and, and to liaise with them and used to refer any vets they found. And, and you know, Border Patrol in great relationship with, with Louis and his, and his people. And the other people down there are vets, and then some aren't. I mean, some Aussies went over who aren't vets, but they've got all these other special skills. And um, I have heard back from everybody that it's absolutely true that, you know, and that's the biggest child trafficking cover-up in, in United States history, as far as I'm concerned, is what happened in Arizona, thanks to Craig Sawyer. Well, you got the, the mayor of Tucson, whatever, I'm not just impinging him because of his name, but you get the mayor of Tucson as a Rothschild. It's a McCain, yeah. co McCain country down there. So, I mean, the possibilities are almost endless. Another element of this, you said about the, the creating super soldiers and what they're doing to children. You had said part of the just you know the beheading the horrible kind of ritualistic stuff that isis is doing to their victims is kind of in this vein and a lot of these guys are You're bred right. super soldiers they're, br they're super soldiers they're not even they weren't even egyptian in appearance they're caucasian you know and they're the reports and the, the look the syria's ambassador to the united nations has said and go and look i've downloaded it you always have to save these things yourself I've got footage that was on YouTube um, and on the United Nations' own site where they, you know, released their films of this guy saying that, you know, when they were murdering all these Christians, beheading them, look at them. These guys, the, the Christians come up to here on these sh soldiers. The tops of their heads are here. Look how tall all the soldiers are. They're freaks. They, they, and, and this guy says on film, these are genetically modified so soldiers, and he's having a go at America, saying, take it back or we're going to shoot them. I mean, this isn't made-up stuff. This isn't conspiracy theory. This is fact. And conspiracy what did Putin fact. say? Putin started talking about creating super soldiers <clears throat> that are more formidable than a nuclear bomb. Now, what that means is they're probably combining the super soldier with the the um i mean i'm just dead a guess but when they weaponize the hemisync process which is the gateway process and if if you look at the cia release document from 2010 it was approved release on the gateway process it's about i don't know how many pages it's about at least 10 pages and um you have to brush up on your quantum physics to understand it <laughs> but um that that's a weaponization of psychic ability you know, you, you can physically manipulate matter through the hemisync process. And all I could think of when, when Putin was saying, you know, we're, we're working on genetically modified soldiers um, was that. Maybe they've combined the two. Well, I can, tell you, I can tell you that. 40, 
over 40 years ago. So I, I can tell you that I have a, a close friend who was Special Forces in Vietnam. He did three tours as a tunnel rat, would go in and hunt the Viet Cong and kill them and then sleep amongst the bodies and go back out and find a new tunnel. It was a, he, he signed up for two extra tours. So that's, that tells you how intense this guy was. But he was recruited. There was a movie made called Men Who Stare at Goats. Do you remember that movie? Yeah, it was a mockumentary. Well, so here's the thing, though. This, this guy actually was in the real program that existed. And it's, it's pretty amazing when he describes it. I won't go into detail. But, and also, I wanted to get back. I wanted to rewind real quick. When you talk to Boys Town in, in Australia, the Boys Town mm-hmm. situation that happened in Omaha, Nebraska, here in the United States, yeah. where the, the, the epidemic, the, the massive amount of molestation that happened in Omaha, Nebraska, you know, several decades ago. I mean, it, it's, that's, there's a common thread there with these boys towns and, and taking care of children, these children's global groups that, that look out supposedly for uh, human, traffic, human trafficking, and they circle them back in, they capture them again and circle them back in, and it's some crazy stuff. It's very linked. I mean, you look at, you look at these, um, is it Pasadena or something, the, the 300... Uh, priests that were named as having, you know, raised Pennsylvania. a thousand. Pennsylvania, yeah. Yeah, yeah Pennsylvania, that's right. Um, you know, uh, all as victims, we sit there and we say, right, well, where's all the ritual abuse references? Because wherever you find priests raping kids, you will find Luciferian ritual abuse. Yeah. And uh, go hand in hand, Catholicism is Luciferianism. You know, the church is just a whitewash of... Uh, you know, black magic rituals. You know, you know it's, you're, you're it's, it's amazing that you say this. Go ahead, go ahead, sorry. Um, I, I'm sorry to cut you off because I had a, a in-depth conversation with a very good friend of mine who has an IQ much higher than Einstein, if that's possible, but he, he is actually much higher. Oh, yeah. And he talked, about, he talked about the flip-flop of good versus evil he said, what if, and this has been four or five years ago he said this, and he said, what if they've been lying to us all along and that what we view, the, the Catholic Church and, and these people, as good and, and everything else, that God that they, that they pray to, that they worship, is actually the evil. It's the Lucifer. Luciferian. And that the reverse, the good God, has been suppressed. Right. And I yeah. sat there and I thought about that. And I knew about, you know, my two oldest brothers were, Fiona, you obviously don't know this, but my two oldest brothers were molested by Catholic priests and both ended up committing suicide as adults. So I, this has impacted me directly also. So it's, it's worldwide, it's rampant, and, and it's, it's tragic and it's got to be stopped because it has dawned on me, it has slammed me in the face that they, the Catholic Church is absolutely Luciferian mm-hmm. in nature. It is. Well, and even it's, hearing where the rituals took place, there you said they're in churches. A lot of these rituals are going on in churches, and like the symbology of, I, I think one in particular was a, a altar with a, a someone laying down. I, it was just crazy. But to, to hear like what you're saying, so many of these rituals are taking place in churches under the auspices. And of people like, describe describe when they cut the pregnant woman open and what they did with the baby. Please. Oh well, that actually happened in Bathurst City Hall, and um, that. It was attended by a lot of priests um, who, you know, subsequently there's been hundreds of, I think there were 300 charges in Bathurst alone against St. Stanislaus uh, College Catholic priests. But they were, uh, they used to use the Bathurst City Hall, the venue, um, regularly for Luciferian rituals attended by the Catholic priests and police and, and that and so forth in Bathurst and it's west of Sydney, and um, well, that was just a typical high-end Luciferian um, black mass. So, which usually involves, you know, this whole thing of communion, the the blood and 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 the and you know, it's a cannibalistic ritual, God. isn't it? Yeah, it's cannibalistic. Yeah, and that's people have got to look back in the Bible when Jesus said, "Do this when you do this, do this in remembrance of me." He meant celebrate Passover. Right. Because he was the sacrificial lamb yeah. that replaced Passover. So he was breaking bread 
and you know sharing sharing the wine there and he's saying do this in remembrance this is my body this is my blood he's talking about passover he's not talking go to church every week and do that every week he did not say that yeah. you know people don't even read the bible they they rely upon you know the priest or some pedophile pastor to interpret it for them they all make me sick if your church is worshiping on a sunday i'm sorry sunday is you know sunday sun worship day it, you know the true sabbath has was, there's all, will always be Saturday. That is the Sabbath. Right. And people have changed it and they justify, oh, but, you know, they met together. Paul and them met together on the Sunday. What? They met for lunch. <laughs> they didn't meet and, and go to church and and start a new ritual. You know, people are full of, I am so over people's misinterpretation of the Bible because they don't bother reading it themselves well they and again it's, it's one of those things like pat just alluded to it it, it, it has almost hijacked reality and inverted it and put it on its head yeah. um and again not to and i really it was like i said it was tough to get through watching a lot of what you've gone through and i know and i don't mean to i don't mean to ask you these questions to make you go through it again but i again our larger audience we have a huge well, audience in australia we have a huge audience all the world but i one of the things that really just I, you know, I have a father. I'm a father of two daughters, but even just empathizing and sympathizing for what you went through, it was a, I think, it, well, you can help me out. Um, you were six. It was in a cemetery. You were placed on a decomposing body, decomposing body of a little of a girl. I was eight. I was, I was eight. eight. Okay, I'm sorry. You were very small. And they Absolute closed the top. Decomposed body. And they were doing a, it, they call it a ghoul. And what they tell you as a child, which is, you know, enough, to, they tell you that um, it's, it's going to come alive once we put it, put you in there on top of it. They place you on a half rotten corpse, a called a ghoul, and um, and then they chant from the Egyptian Book of the Dead, and to make the ghoul come alive. Now, as a kid, you know, what could be worse? And I screamed so much that I um, I passed out and I suffocated. And then I went through a near-death experience and woke up in Sutherland Hospital with a light in my face and hospital emergency staff around me. And the walls were tiled and blue tiles and I knew furniture a certain way and the gas bottle. And years later, when I was about 22, 23, I went to that hospital. I walked up to my um, boyfriend was with me. I walked up to the front desk and I said to this German-speaking nurse, I said, um, look, this happened to me. I died, da da da, and she said, "Look, we can look up and see if your records here." I said, "There's no way." I said, uh, "Doctor took care of me, uh, Leonis Petraskas, it was," and I said, "You know, they wouldn't have entered. You, my details would not be in the system." I said, "But and I just described the room." She says, "Look, the whole hospital's been renovated except this one room," and she took me to the room. Everything was as I had drawn it. Wow. The blue tiles were still there. The furniture was there where, where I said there's supposed to be furniture there. She said, look, it's all been moved. But, you know, there was a little bit of something there. The the old gas bottle was still there. She said, this is where you would have been brought. The silver table was there. The door was where I remembered it. The room was the size I remembered it as. The light was where I remembered it. I was facing the way I remembered it, you know. Um, Did you tell her so the whole story? That was Garawara Cemetery. Yeah, but did you tell her the whole story, the the nurse? The nurse. Yeah, when when you when you went uh, back when you were no, in your twenties. She said no because the next thing she said was she said she could we nearly lost you and they had shower hats on. I remember they had shower hats. They said we nearly lost you and that she said mummy's here and I thought my mum was there. Next thing this this wife redheaded wife of the local Ingadine fat police officer came in and. Um, and she had a black cross around her neck and a black dress. And I remember going, that's not mummy. But I, I was trained not to say anything. And I just, you know, I thought my real mother was there. How many of and these then, people are still, pretend, how many of these people are still alive? At a hospital. Yeah, how many of these people are still alive, Fiona? Uh, um, well, Anthony Kidman's wife's still alive. Nicole Kidman's still alive. She witnessed all of this stuff. Um, she witnessed her father beat me conscious when she was 17 she's not made police statements uh john bell who raped me he's still alive um uh, uh who was there uh rosalind croucher she is uh, the lawyer redheaded law lawyer she's still alive she was uh quite young um by comparison she was at that bathurst city hall 
she organised that Bathurst City Hall um, high-end ritual sacrifice of the pregnant woman Jesus. and the, you know, the cannibalistic, uh, you know, taking of the blood and body. Um, she's still alive. She's now head of the Australian Human Rights Commission. Oh, my She's God. president of the Australian Human Rights Commission. And she just defended a pedophile recently who lost his job because he lied about his criminal record. Yeah, I was just going to actually ask you about that because when we sit, when we talk about how institutionalized this is, I think a guy in the UN a month or so ago who was basically part of a child trafficking commission was trafficking children and got busted trying to hire a little boy. And whoever that United name- Nations, back in two, 1992, I attended a child abuse and neglect conference when I was doing a master's in art therapy in Perth. And the, it was at Princess Margaret Hospital, and the speaker was Frida Briggs. She was an ex-cop um, and a social worker. And she said that the United Nations had just been busted. The headquarters, I think it's in Geneva, and they'd just been busted um, because they were operating as a child prostitution brothel. You see, that's what's so disgusting. You have these individuals like Rosalind Cratch at the head of the Australian Human Rights Commission. You just mentioned Kim Beasley Sr., head of a part of some board of child trafficking. Kim Beasley Jr. is still running around. He and Bob Carr, Bob Carr was secretly convicted of pedophilia years ago. Uh, he abused these two kids in a hotel, and they happened to be, um, at least one of them was the, the child of one of the um, workers in the hotel. Anyway, he was secretly convicted of that, and all that was held secret from the public. He and Kim Beasley Jr. attended Bohemian Grove in 2012 um, using tax, Australian taxpayers' money to get there. And you have your own personal experience with Bohemian Grove. Do you mind expounding on that? Because it's a pretty heavy-hitting name. Oh, well, I, was trafficked, I was trafficked there in two, uh, when I was six, and it was after Watergate. And um, I was abused in the back of like a CIA plane at Fair Ban- I never say this right, Fair F A I R B A I R N E or something. And Fairbairn Airport, it's the military airport in Canberra. It's Australia's main military airport where Air Force One flies into. And um, it's just outside of Canberra. And uh, I was abused in the back of a plane by Richard Nixon, who's just a violent rapist. And um, then he recommended me to. Um, uh, Bohemian Grove to Billy Graham, his mate. Now, people forget Nixon. They go, oh, Nixon wouldn't do that. Oh, what? Nixon the liar who was thrown out of his position as president because he lied, that one. Right. You know, so... And then he was very good mates with Billy Graham who vouched for him and helped get, get him the vote, the Christian conservative vote. Oh, what, that Billy Graham, that piece of filth, he's a 33-degree mason, and people go, oh, he's not a Freemason. Well, yeah, I've published on Twitter. Look in the photo section. I've published a book on Freemasonry written by a Freemason saying he was. So, you know, anyway, so I was trafficked to um, Bohemian Grove to their, you know, summer camp, which is a Luciferian pedophile camp. And all they do is rape and hunt children for sport there, and they murder. I saw a Luciferian murder. Billy Graham was in, inten- in attendance at everything there, and uh, he he's he was just he, look he was just a, a, a just a fag you know like a pedo fag he he just pink bubble theme room he took me to and someone said that their father worked at Bohemian Grove and oh they drew a link that's right I was researching it a link between the pink bubble cabin he said what it was linked to there's a club the pink something in in downtown. Um, Vegas, I think it is, or no, or um, San Francisco, and it was a some kind of pink club, and he said it's linked to that Fiona, and there is a cabin decked out in pink. Wow. So, well, before before I before I ask you because I was going to ask you to expound on your firsthand knowledge of child hunting as a history guy, I was actually blown away by your breakdown on what Watergate was really about. Yeah, Watergate was Pedogate. Now everyone can I. I've posted um, Detective New York Police Department Detective Jim Rothstein was appointed to the very first uh, task force investigating ch- human trafficking and child prostitution to VIPs, and within weeks he discovered it went all the way up to the White House, and um, and he was shut down every time he tried to do anything right. He was shut down over the years, but he's 
He's tried for decades to expose this. And he says Watergate was pedogate. Watergate was solely about one thing. It was um, the uh, Nixon was trying to obtain the um, book of the little black book from, that was being held at the Democratic headquarters. And it contained a list of um, VIP pedophiles and their proclivities. So what they who they had sex with, what age, you know, they liked, how much they paid and all that sort of stuff. And back then prostitution was illegal and homosexuality was a, a, a scandal. Right. And so it also had that sort of stuff in it. Okay. So they were just keeping, it was the blackmail records of, of the honey honey traps. And which which is what we say all the time on this show, and you've mentioned it, and it's almost like a no-brainer. You don't get into upper levels of mafia, military, government, etc., unless you have some measure of compromise, something mafia. compromised on you. Go read a book called Dope Incorporated, 1978, Dope Inc., and it tells you how the mafia was set up by British intelligence and the CIA. The CIA, everything, everything, all crime in America, link, all drug trafficking, all child trafficking, everything link, is linked to the CIA, and the CIA was set up by British intelligence, and British intelligence answers to the Crown. Jesus, Lord. You're making my brain hurt, Fiona. Another thing, I mean, we talk about it all the time, the hey, lack of... The hey. la Imagine mine. I know, I know, sweetheart. I know, I know. I I so apologize. Another thing you had mentioned, there was a huge Australian bank that got pinched and fined for like hundreds of millions of dollars for like 55,000 breaches of money laundering money laundering, because they were taking proceeds from pedo stuff. Federal Bank, Commonwealth Bank, which was privatized by, I think, John Howard. But we used to own that bank. That was that was owned by the people. Uh, the Commonwealth Bank is Australia's most famous, largest, oldest bank and um, it was this year fined $700 million for um, oh, how many breaches? 54,000 yeah. breaches of money laundering legislation. And all of that was to do with they were laundering money obtained from child trafficking and it was funneled into overseas terrorist activities. So wow. it's just working for the CIA again. That's what the CIA do. They, they, all these banks, the HSBC, all of them. I mean, these banks were set up during the Opium Wars. Some of them, the the Hancock Shanghai Bank, was set up by the British Crown during the Opium Wars to traffic the drug, the opium money. Yeah. And it's still trafficking, and they've been busted twice in history for laundering money from drug. It's amazing that they trafficking. are but using they're children. They've always said it's all about. It's all about you know trafficking drugs and arms, but more, far more lucrative than drugs and arms is the trafficking of children, human yeah. trafficking, slave trafficking, but the trafficking of children is the most lucrative. And, their, the most expensive. and their organs, apparently. Over. Yeah, their organs too. You know, you've got Ronald Bernard's talked about that. He's one of the bankers who used to work with the CIA, work for the Rothschilds, um, doing all the money laundering. Moving the money. So what do you what do you think? Where are we at in the big scheme of things, in the big picture, to being We're able near the end, to to right the, the to, what you call the Illuminati, I call Luciferians. It all means the same stuff. I don't right. like the word Illuminati. It's got such conspiracy connotations. Right, right. Um, the the Luciferians run the place. Yeah. And go read Revelation for what's about to happen. All these merchants, you know, that get that make everyone rich in Revelation, when it says Babylon has fallen and in one hour it's all going to be brought down, right. and, you know, and, and what, what they make their money out of, it tells you in Revelation, out of slaves and the souls of men. Yeah. They traded in slaves and the souls of men. This is the child trafficking ring that... Um, oh. You froze. If you can hear us, you froze. And then I was there a victim you. of, yeah, you so know? The, uh, I mean, are it's all, we? It's all. They're coming to. Okay, what I'm going to say is the Luciferians are coming to power. They're coming to light. They've always been in power. Right. But what they're doing is now they are now showing their hand. Look at it. Voodoo donuts. You know, selling openly selling child trafficking donuts. You know that Franklin Graham, the big pedophile Luciferian, like his father. You know, bragged about dining it and post tweeted after I'd written an article on it, and after you know Michael Whalen came out and testified to having witnessed the, the, the owner of the Voodoo Donut yeah. trafficking. Yeah, I, I found yeah. that interesting that you made that accusation against Billy Graham and then his, his family or his son, and the next day he's at Voodoo Donuts taking a picture with you know. 
people took it as a threat. Anyone who is a victim of this stuff, we all talk. We talk differently than other people do, and we go, oh, that was a threat. That was aimed at you, Fiona. That was da-da-da. And the public took it as a threat, you know? Why, why come out and say that, oh, look at these killer donuts, eating them out of a, a box that's designed like a Ouija board, and on the side it says the magic is in the hole. Oh, yeah, right. Real subtle. He shouldn't be in that position. If he's so bloody stupid, he can't work out what he's eating and where. Well, he, and he takes it down. Oh, an IQ, the moron. He took that tweet down, too, after you put him on blast. And then people are trying to tell me I it was Photoshopped and I Photoshopped it. Oh, please. Like, hell, tell that to the 10,000 people who witnessed it and came out outraged about it all at the end. Right. Tell that to them. Well, we, what but I... We're all lying now. What I, right, not, right. All the Christians who saw it, they're furious, too. There's a woman there who said, my mother bequeathed everything to Billy Graham Foundation in her will, or a portion of it, in her will. She says... After this, Fiona, she's pulled him out of his her will. Good. Good. Everyone needs yeah. to do that. Stop yeah. Giving yeah. money to these <clears throat> right. guys. So the the what I what I call the the times we are living in now, Fiona, um, is the apocalypse based on the Greek word apocalypsis, which is darkness to light. And do you believe yeah. when Donald Trump says that human traffickers and pedophiles? Need he said it several times publicly in speeches that they need to have the death penalty. They need to die. Um, do you believe that Donald Trump is truly going after these people? Is he trying to stop this? Is this is this a war between Trump's camp and his military intelligence people like Mattis and, and all their their team against the globalists who are who are Luciferians? Do you believe that this is really the that evil versus good war that's going on? Well. I, I honestly haven't decided myself yet. I was shocked when Trump got in because I knew the first thing I said to everyone was, oh, my gosh, the Luciferians thought Hillary would get in. Yeah. That was my gut reaction, and often I know things, okay? And I just walked around in shock. I'm going, that wasn't supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. That wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> I so did this. I did this. My, that's my, that was my gut reaction. And I was in America just leading up to the election. I came back to Australia just after, just before the election. And um, I saw what was going on over there and, you know, so divided the nation. Um, but uh, one thing I've said in an interview just the other day was if, if Trump is anti-CIA, that would explain a lot of what is going on. Yeah. Um, because JFK was anti-CIA and got his head blown off it yeah. for it. Um, Gough Whitlam in Australia was anti-CIA and uh, the Crown threw him out enacted archaic legislation against him and, and dismissed him as right. Prime Minister of Australia yeah. um, because he was anti CIA. Now both and, and I said, you know, JFK slept with Marilyn Monroe, an MK Ultra sex slave, right? He, he was a bit of a tart, right? Um, Gough Whitlam molested me, you know, raped me and a whole bunch of other children. He was a pedophile, right? Um, so these people are not good people, right? But, but what changed everything was the fact they're anti-CIA and took a stand because Gough Whitlam was trying to um, expose the CIA in Australia and close Pine Gap and not renew the lease the CIA had on Pine Gap, their main base. Yeah. And so they got rid of him. Now, it would make sense that Trump, who is a complete slut, let's face it, you know, <laughs> he, he's, he likes women, he, he's had access to beautiful women, and who wouldn't if you're a multi-billionaire and you're not a Christian? Kind of par for the course, wrong, so Who's not going to, big deal, who hasn't slept with lots of women? But whether or not he is involved in child sex trafficking, I've seen no hard evidence. I've seen people say, oh, I've seen him do the hand signals, Fiona, and stuff like that. Um, Fiona, you know, there's this crap about Stormy Daniels. Well, that's been blown open by the witness who saw her involved in child trafficking. She's just a setup. Then you've got people saying, oh, yeah, but there's, there's, there's all these, you know, someone tried to make, take, a, you know, court action against him. Signed Jane Doe. Like, that's credible. Yeah. You know, I'm not Jane Doe. I put my name to everything. If you want to be credible, put your name to it. And, um, you know, so I haven't seen anything really substantial yet. So um, or the other possibility is they're playing Hegelian dialectic with yeah. this thesis, antithesis. You know, maybe they are. And, and, and you start wondering, well, is it Hegelian dialectic when all these indictments, nothing's coming of it? And meanwhile, people are dying and that... Jenny, that, that cop slash journalist yeah. who was out Clinton as a pedophile, had all this good stuff on him. 
is suddenly commit suicide via two bullets to the back of the head kind of scenario. Oh, you know, in aneurysm, people are dying. Yeah. Yeah. If he's got anything, I want him to come out and just announce it. He could blow this open if he just came out on telly and went, hey, CIA is behind all child sex trafficking. Hey, Fiona in Australia, we're sorry on behalf of our nation. We're sorry we, we trafficked you. Um, we're sorry, David Scherto, that you were trafficked. We trafficked you and used you in experiments, government experiments, you know, as a kid. Hey, we're, we're sorry, you know, Sarah Ashcraft, you know, you were abused by Tom Hanks in Hollywood. You know, we're sorry, Vegan Mikey, you know, that you were abused as a kid. We're sorry, Robert, that the whole town of Auburn, you know, it's like something out of Hot Fuzz movie. You know, we're sorry, everyone. Meanwhile, we're all under persecution. So really, you know, we're starting to say, is he just full of shit? Yeah, and that's that's something I'm you're glad you brought up Sarah Ruth Ashcraft and then like uh, uh, Isaac um, Kepi and, and even yourself when you come out with such amazing um, claims and accusations, of course there's going to be such a huge effort to try to delegitimize you, etc. And I remember you mentioned something about the False Memory Foundation, which went kind of to the oh. heart of kind of making your your oh, memories they're just coming out in force now. They've started up one piece of filth from Holland has just written an article. Uh, bashing um, uh, a lady who who rightly says that DID has to do with trauma. DID is a result of trauma, childhood trauma. Now, um, this piece of filth, can't remember his name, but I will be publishing it everywhere later. Um, I've already said something about it on, on Twitter. He's come out. Now, he – and then somebody came out, then a doctor um, came out and hammered him for being a member of a pedophile ring. And um, that's what anybody who's in this False Memories Foundation are pedophiles, Luciferian pedophiles who have been accused of abusing their kids or they're on the CIA payroll to defend MK Ultra experiments. All the original False Memory Foundation people, board members, were all perpetrators of MK Ultra child abuse experiments. All of them. Elizabeth Loftus, her research was so crap she would have failed first year psychology had she claimed that you know an experiment with 29 29 you know 18 year old bottle blonde american upper class girls the you know who um whether or not they could remember imagining falling through a plate glass window or imagining a, a car what the color of a car driving by if you try and extrapolate that and and apply that generalize that to the world's Across the world, you know, our population of, the, you know, who have experienced the most heinous, traumatic, real, developmental, um, developmentally impacting crimes that a human being can be exposed to, that woman should have a throat slit. Yeah. You know, she is a foul beast. Yeah. You know, her stuff is crap and whoever, whoever cites that stuff should be thrown out of their jobs. That is disgusting. They are worse than the people who perpetrate these crimes. If you cover it up, you're worse than the ones who commit the crimes. Without the a doubt. Yeah. You're, yeah. An ex you're an accessory, in my opinion. Uh, well, and you had mentioned this before, and I found this. I had heard this from individuals about, like, author Hunter S. Thompson. I've just heard this, generally speaking, and you mentioned it at, at Bohemian Grove, and I know there's other places. You have firsthand experience of these elite hunting children a address that in the first part of the question and then the second part you alluded to possibly uh the ranch where J supreme court judge antonin scalia was found dead uh that was yeah. might have been a ranch for that purpose so kind of speak to your first-hand experience at bohemian grove and your opinions on that scalia ranch well it's the order of saint hubert i think it's called um there's there's a european hunting organ child hunting organization it goes back centuries and centuries and um <coughs> bohemian grove is actually founded on that um organization and the texas rent boy ranch as we call it the group from that um child hunting organization were there at the time of his death and they were engaging in child hunts now i knew that the moment i read everything my head just went ding 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 and put it all together and i wrote an article i wrote the article and i gave it to david um Scherter to put up he said oh can i have it because he was a victim of um, angelus scalia i put it up and it's david that told me his source told him that the 13 year old boy that scalia was raping at the time the mk ultra victim went all assassin on him turn around and slit his throat 
and um, killed him. And that's what the yeah. Da and then David doesn't. David was making a lot of pop back then. Okay, I love him, but <laughs> he did say recently, "Oh, my head's so much clearer." When I, he's the one who told me that, and he got that from another person, another source. Well, that could be anyway, a big reason why there was no autopsy. There was no autopsy allowed on his body, yeah, which is pretty yeah, unprecedented. Yeah, if I'm full of crap. Where's the autopsy? Right. Where's the autopsy? That's the that's the Same one that's the, the one thing that condemns them. Where's the autopsy? Show me the autopsy, dudes. Yeah. yeah. If it, I'm full of crap, show me the autopsy. No matter how outlandish anyone thinks this story is, that's the one condemning factor is that there was no autopsy on a Supreme There's Court no justice. Autopsy. And if you look at the art mm. that was that was found at Renton Boy Ranch there, it's all Luciferian art. It's and and pertains to child trafficking art. And then Alex Jones stole my story and put it up as his and tried to make out it was his. Washington Post stole my article and used it as theirs. No one credited me when I was the author of all of that. Well, again, and you had alluded to this before, and we're going to let you go here pretty soon. Um, like I said, this is everywhere, and you had mentioned um, Nicole Kidman's father. I forget his name. He was a uh, he professor. He yeah, a professor of psychology. And, you know, a lot of these people who are involved in this and are no longer useful wind up dead. And as soon as you put his name out there as being a part of this, he wound up dead. Absolutely. He was um, ordered to commit suicide. Wow. I know what happened because I know how it works. He would have gone before the grand, the grand council that meets at Sydney university and they would have tried him and they would have ordered him to commit suicide. Either you do it or we will. So he went over to America, said goodbye to Nicole, went to Singapore where Nicole's younger sister, Antonia, ha owned a hotel and he jumped off the balcony. Wow. Heavy. Very heavy. That's very... Well, and you had mentioned Alex Jones, and I'm kind of going to let you go on this statement or this question about him. You know, Alex Jones is Alex Jones. He's kind of entertaining info, half news or whatever, but his purging last week of off, off all social media... Uh, we see a lot of people getting banned, you know, from monetization on YouTube. Yeah, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah. Alex Jones then monetized everything, opened up a site, and he's raking it in. Oh yeah, that's sure, what I was going to sure, say. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, through through that through that uh, that purge, he wound up. Yeah, his app wound up blowing up higher than it had ever been. But what are your just thoughts on that? Yeah. Just generally speaking, other shows, just these 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 twitters. Oh, these... Alex Jones, Alex Jones is a CIA shill. I've always said that. I've always known that he's a piece of filth. You you'll notice anyone who doesn't interview me <laughs> have a question mark. Okay, I'm going to say, um, what's that? What's Hagman and Hagman have never interviewed me, and I was told by someone in the know that the person that stands between Hagman and Hagman, the producer or something, the guy who is responsible for choosing guests on the show, is dirty. I don't know who that is, but he's dirty. Huh. And I was told that. So you won't see me on Hagman and Hagman. And plus, there's a little group in this Christian world. There's Canary Cry Radio, Hagman and Hagman, uh, L.A. Marzulli, um, Stephen, uh, you know, the one who's into the Giants. And then you've got um, the one who wrote Conspiracy Theory, uh, Cosmic Conspiracy, which was a real book, uh, Don Stanton. All those people, they all, they all hang around each other and, um, and they all sell books and none of them report on on this stuff. You know, Canary Cry Radio, I think those two guys are genuine. Gons and um, Baz Basil, I think they're genuine, but the people, that Russell Deerstar is a piece of filth. I know people that he's abused. Who is that? Say it again. Say on, Who is again? Um, Russ Deerstar. Russ Deerstar is a Luciferian perpetrator, works for the CIA and the Luciferian covens to, you know, pick out victims like me. And, and reprogram them or get them killed. You know, I can't believe how people follow that slime bucket. And then everyone's defending him, you know. But Canary Cry Radio uh, are, you know, grouping up with them. Then you've got that Michael Lake guy. I cannot listen to him. If my gut starts, if I want to throw up when I listen to someone, I know they're fake. And that's what happened to Dizdar. He's just a creep. And the same with Michael Lake and his wife. I will not go near them. And um, then there's another one, um, Preston Bailey. I know from a first-hand witness, Rainer Michelson attended his conference 14 years ago or so, and uh, she said he had a sex kitten dripping off his arm, you know, and, and she and her girlfriend feared for life when they travelled with him in his car. And, you know, he's just a piece of filth that everyone's... And then you've got Dan Duval from Bride Ministries. He hanged around. I had a fight with him over Preston. I wouldn't support Preston Bailey. Now they've all fallen out anyway. Carolyn Hamlet 
you know, is, is controlled. And, and, you know, everyone believes Kathy O'Brien. She was controlled by Mark Phillips. The real victim was Bryce Taylor. And, the, and, and she herself said she was attacked by Kathy O'Brien and Mark Phillips. See, you have to be in this stuff to be able to discern who's who in the pedo zoo. Yeah. People have got it all wrong. And I say something and then they, oh, don't cause division. And what? I'm sorry. I, as a victim, am not going to be united with Luciferian pedophile fakes, right? These people are fakes. I know which ones are fake. You either listen to me or go do your own bloody homework and find out the hard way right. when you're lined up. To the guillotines in a few years. Wow. Well, and see, and that's yeah. what's been refreshing. I mean, I've kind of, like I said, studied these kind of ideas and concepts. I mean, a lot of this stuff goes back centuries, like you said, but what's refreshing with you is you are let justice be done, though the heavens fall. You are naming names. You are making people accountable for their actions. Because like from Corey Feldman or all these other people, just hearing about just kind of the concept, just kind of the general concept of, of pedophilia and, you know, the, the trafficking, which we kind of all know exists. But oh, you, whether it's, whether it's Mayor, Meryl Streep, Richard Nixon, Billy Graham, like you are dropping hammers. And I, I can't thank you enough for that because like we were talking about the indictments. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of waiting for these supposed 40,000 indictments. We're going to see all these huge perp walks. And, you know, Imran Awan, I don't know if you're familiar with the story, this Pakistani guy that was running aspiring just got off today with no, you know, no jail. So there's no real accountability. It's just this kind of Q. Q is going to be the savior of the world or whatever. And this keeps kicking the can down the road while nobody's held accountable. I'm not affiliated with Q. People, you know, it's so partisan over there. In Australia, if you're a dickhead, we vote you out the next year and we will jump party. Right. 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 Yeah. Pretty, that's what I love about Australians. We call it as it is. I'm a lot of what you see with me is is a byproduct of being Australian. My sense of humour is Australian. Okay, we don't take any crap. And um and 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 then this whole thing of oh well I'm going to stick with the party because that's what my grandfather did and my second cousin twice removed. We don't do that over here. You're out, sunshine. Right. And you're not getting in for another eight years, mate. You the know, pro- go yeah. clean out your party, find a whole new bunch of people because we hate you. Yeah, and the problem... So, the and, pro- and that's how it is. And, the, the pro- and, and I am absolutely sick and tired of people, you know, I get it. I get in tr- Some people thought, oh, I'm for Clinton because I attacked Nixon and I attacked Billy Graham. Then, you know, <laughs> I am I must be working for Q because I attacked Clinton. I mean, for goodness sake, I attack pedophile Child traffickers, that's what I attack. That is my enemy. I don't care who you are. I don't care whether you're male or female. I don't care whether you're, whether you're gay or straight. I don't care whether you you know, you know go for Clinton or, or Trump. I don't care. I'll call you out. Right. You know, and that's I, what I don't care if you pretend. I don't care if it upsets the church. The whole of First Baptist Church in America hate my guts now because I've I, I refuse. I refuse to lie. I refuse to say what's politically correct. I refuse to deny, deny my testimony. You know, yesterday, this is how hard it is for me, all right? For a start, this is the price I pay as a victim. I'm not invited to my baby sister's wedding, right? I'm the only one who's not. Yet, yet I'll tell you who's invited. One of my brothers is married into a Luciferian pedo family because they use him as a breeding bull. And that whore of Babylon is going to the wedding, but I'm not allowed to go because I might upset the apple cart because the Luciferian child trafficker who abuses my niece and nephew is going. Wow. Right? So that's the decision that's been made in my own bloody family. That's okay. I don't want to go. Right? And um, and so and people don't have the balls in my own family to take a stand. Right? All my siblings were abused. You know, none of them will come forward. None, none of them would come into the Candy Girl video with me and support me. Yeah. None. I'm not going to lose my job, said one. Another one, no, I'm not doing that. You know, get you, get off social media, Fiona. Take our real surname down, Fiona. That's all they care about, wow. you know? And, and that's my own flesh and blood family. Right. Wow. Uh, Have you had death now, threats? Now. Oh, oh, what do you mean death? All the time. Yeah. I've had attempts on my life. I've had animals chopped up and, and left up on my doorstep. I've had my dogs poisoned. I've had, you know, I've had this go on all my life, right. death threats. You had a car accident right? recently, didn't you? Around. I take photos of people chasing me, military-looking thugs chasing me, post up on Twitter, you know. I had two other witnesses to that make police statements. I had the cops ring another police station and call these guys off, you know. Yeah, there's evidence. I've had witnesses to all this stuff, you know. But I'll tell you what happened yesterday. So I go into therapy because all this stuff takes its toll. Right. I'm being asked about certain things. I had to go in and and I had I started abreacting 
mid-interview for the SGT report, I think it is, mid-interview, I just, my head started spinning, I started having a near flashback, and I had to pull the pin on talking about um, Dr. West, Jolly West, and, um, and pull the plug on talking about Ted Turner at Disneyland, because he started asking me questions, and um, and no one ever asked me before, and the information's there if you just haven't asked me. And this is the whole thing about ritual abuse and mind control. You must have suggestion in order to remember, and that's what the false memory people have, have targeted. Wow. The way to remember is someone suggesting it to you or you see something that triggers your memory. You need a trigger to remember and begin processing the memories, okay? Now, yesterday I get out of a really shit therapy session. I mean, it was bad, okay? I can't, it was just bad. I drive, I start driving back and I go, you know, I'll, I'll go, I'll drop in. It turns out, you know, the women's Bible study once a month, we all meet, blah, blah. I'll drop in, you know, uh, to women's Bible study. I drop in and then somebody there who likes conspiracy stuff and says, oh, how's it going, Fiona? And I said, oh, it's so funny. You should see this. You know, I've coined this term hashtag, you know, pedo wood and hashtag donut gate. I said, and I have a laugh about it because I can laugh. I have to, if you don't laugh, you cry, right? Yeah, right. And um, anyway, so we're talking and then this other person come, you know, somebody says, oh, tell Denise, tell Denise at the Bible study. And I'm going, oh, don't tell Denise. You know, I don't want to tell Denise. Denise already had a meltdown when I mentioned Billy Graham before because she's in the Baptist church and loves him. And, oh, Franklin Graham's done so much for the children. and all. I've seen his gift boxes. Oh, for goodness sake. And pedophile Rolf Harris used to play for children's charities too. Jimmy Savile used to have gym, children's charities. Right. Just because you do good works in the public eye, Freemasons have a policy of doing good works. doesn't mean you're not a Luciferian pedophile. Anyway, so we're talking about all this stuff. And next thing, you know, I, I said, I said, just get the computer and show her. Show her the donuts. Show her the triple penetration themed donut or the donut of the penis with Jesus crucified on it with he is risen on it with the double meaning, he is risen. You know, show her the stuff. Oh, no, so, she, you know, anyway, tell her, oh, I don't believe it unless I see it. Okay, we go and open the computer. Have a look, Denise. Look at it. And she's there. She's going, oh, no, no, that must be Photoshop. The tweet from, from Franklin Graham eating out of a voodoo donut box and taking a picture of him in front of the sign, that must be photoshopped. Did you photoshop it? You know? Uh, no. You don't understand how Twitter works. This was live. This was live streamed. Yeah. It was It was there. I happened to not be able to sleep at 2 in the morning, and I happened to capture it before he took it down. And he took it down because of me. Oh, you know, and, and then she turned around. She kept on going, and the argument, and my head's full. You know, I've, got, I've had a month of... You know, these, these Billy Graham worshipping morons, bottle blonde morons, cafe latte sipping in their local church morons, don't do anything but, you know, wait, sit around waiting for the rapture, warming the Sunday pew morons, you know, on bashing me on Twitter instead of saying, hey, hey, I'm really sorry that you are abused. Geez, that must have been bloody hard. Isn't it amazing? You've dealt with this for 50 years, right? None of that. Just, you're a liar. You know, you're a witch. You're this, right? Former witch to you, woman. Anyway, so, so you know, she's hammering me, and then she said one thing that I saw red. I'd had a gutful. She said, are you sure, Fiona, that at age six that it was Billy Graham? Are you sure your memories are accurate? Well, no, uh uh I huh. stood up. I put my finger in her face, and I screamed down her throat. You would have heard me a valley away. I screamed at her. And I don't even remember what I said, but I lost it. I saw it. I just thought I'd had a gut full of these, you know, lazy-ass Christians. And I screamed at her. And the, the final thing I said, I said, you're completely useless, you lot. I said, you church goers. I said, the reason why I am up to 3 a.m. in the morning for the past five years counselling victims around the world is because you, because you don't do a bloody thing to help. Yeah. You know, and Great I just point. slammed the door and I just left. You know, this this is what I put up with in my private life. Yeah. They're my friends, my so-called Christian Bible group. And then what do they do? They lie to me. One friend, Jane, she says, oh, Fiona, can I come around, you know? They, she turns up with Denise and another friend. Like, I haven't even processed what she just did. I'm in shock and I'm just so angry. I've just come out of therapy and she brings them around and then I have to forgive and forget, do I? I forgave her. I said, God, what do you want me to do? He said, just hug her and tell her. Okay, I did. But they all left, and I'm left in shock. 
you know, at home on my own processing this shit. And I've had enough. You know, I, I'm going to try and finish the book I'm writing and I'm not, I've got nothing left to say. Everyone can go and read my feeds. I've got my website. I have to do one thing to help someone who's, you know, lesbian partner was kidnapped and has never been seen again and the police are covering it up in America. I've got to help that girl and I'm going to write that article up and I'm going to write my book and I'm done. I've got nothing left to say. You've said your piece. Everyone else can sit around waiting, you know, for, for Godo. I mean, I that's, <clears throat> that's got to be just incredibly, incredibly frustrating all of this, all this stuff we talk about, there's just no accountability. And for you to know what you've been through and from your family and from your closest people in your circle to still not have your back like that. I mean, it just the emotional toll just has to be incredible. And again, I mean, if that is your plan to like basically go black after your book and everything, I can't. I seriously and I'm speaking thank for you Pat. For, thank I you cannot, for joining us before that happened. I cannot thank you enough for your courage, your bravery. I mean, yeah. it, I know you hear that a lot, but seriously, Fiona, it's. I do. You're and a warrior. Days, like, people often, I mean, I've got a backlog of, you know, a thousand friend requests on Facebook that I can't accept because, you know, I tried to set up a public page and Facebook are bastards and, you know, wouldn't allow it. Right. And, um, you know, so I've got, five, you know, I've maxed out how many people I can have for friends. But, you know, people messaging me and it's really, I've got, now I've got too many that I can't, can't I just can't keep up. Right. right. I need an assistant, you know, for the free work I do. I need a free assistant. You know, yeah. and um, you, you know, but but my main motivation is, and and the main thing I do is I I, I help victims in the background, and I and I advise um, therapists in the background. That's the main thing I do because there's nothing out there for them. Well, you're you multiplying. Know? That's Everywhere that's else, that's the best thing you could so do. Is portrayed by Luciferian pedophiles that the information is not out there to for for therapists to know how to help victims. Yeah. So you know, and and I've I was asked. I've been asked so many times, and it's for the victims I'm writing a book for and their therapists. I will do the book, God willing, everyone pray that I get it finished because last month's been a bit of a distraction. I'm doing that, and then I've had enough. I okay. really have. I think I've made my contribution. Yes, you have. And I don't make any money out of this. I've lost money. I've lost a career. Yeah. I've lost money on selling and moving. I've lost, you know, I've, I've lost friends and family. Uh, you know, I, I have gained absolutely fuck all out of this. Well, definitely, if, if that's you've the gained I mean, massive amounts of respect from people like us. Well, you and you that. and you've raised, hopefully, raised awareness of how crazily ubiquitous this is. And again, reality has been inverted. And we need to we need to really start opening our eyes to see nothing is as it seems. And and for God's sakes, man, we have to start protecting our children. Yeah. Without a doubt. Well, wow. Well, Fiona, I'll let you get on with the rest of your day as it is uh, over the morning over there in Sydney. Um, Have a wonderfully strong coffee and wake up. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm going to go hit the garden. You All know. Right. Oh, that's I'm nice just, and therapeutic. I'm, well, I'm retiring. I'm also an artist and a painter, and I think I'm just going to go paint and you know maybe write my musical, Pedophile the Musical. I'm still we're still waiting to hear back on that. Not that I care. You know, I just I might do it for fun. Pedophile might the just Musical. Open up might, might open it up at the local theater, you know, be a bit of fun. Well, we'll, we'll be know, on the we'll, we'll be on the lookout for that and your, and your book. What's your book called? Creative. Yeah, what's your book um, going to be titled? Book is called Eyes Wide Open: An Australian Experience of CIA Child Trafficking. Okay. Wow. Well, we'll definitely be on the look for that. Uh, do you have while it's around? Do you have any social network or any websites you want to shout out where we can see what you're up to? I've had a couple of websites going for a while, fionabarnett.org and pedophilesdownunder.com. Okay, okay. So I probably will post to there, but I'm not going to be going on social media uh, mm -hmm. responding to everyone's messages anymore because it's a full-time job. And, yeah. you know, I've got, I've got family who are saying, hey, you know, can we have a conversation? We need to talk about this school thing or, you know, my kids, my youngest is, Hello? There oh, you are. There we yeah. are. You froze. Sorry. Your, you said your kid? You hear what I, said? I said? I just said I've been so busy saving the world that I neglected my own children, and they need some time. All right. Go spend time with your children, love. Absolutely. Fiona, thank you again so much. Conti I mean, again, your bravery you. is unmatched, and um, I'm glad to have talked to you. This, this, If you go away... And, you know, this this interview is here for the archives. This is a lot of information for people to take in. And like you said, your contribution has been amazing. You've done your part. And I can't thank you enough. Thank you for shining the light on this.
Okay. Thanks, guys. That that was a good interview. Thanks for being respectful. Absolutely. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Bye-bye. God bless. Bye.